from WRL News and the Capital Broadcasting Podcast Network. This is your coronavirus, North Carolina News Brief for Wednesday, April 29th, 2020. I'm Cliff Baumgartner. Here's the latest from WRL.com. More Wake County businesses will be allowed to open their doors on Friday after the county's stay-at-home order during the coronavirus pandemic expires. Most of the county will shift to the statewide stay-at-home order, although Apex officials plan to issue their own rules. In a statement, Greg Ford, chairman of the Wake County Board of Commissioners, said, quote, We put our order in place in late March to slow the spread of COVID-19 in Wake County, one day before the governor issued the statewide stay-at-home order. Our community was affected first by the virus, making it vital that we act more swiftly. But now that there is community spread and we are all fighting to slow the spread collectively, it's appropriate to follow the state's order, which provides some additional flexibility to our residents, end quote. Under the county order, retail was very limited. Even under relaxed rules county officials put in place two weeks ago, retail sales were restricted to curbside pickup or delivery. The state order, however, allows many retailers to operate, as long as they practice social distancing by limiting the number of customers inside, thoroughly clean surfaces, and screen employees to make sure they're healthy. Still, some types of businesses must remain closed until at least May 8th under the state order, including gyms and health clubs, hair salons and nail salons and barbershops, tattoo parlors, sweepstakes parlors and other gaming businesses, movie theaters and music venues, and bars and restaurants, which will also continue to be limited to drive through takeout, or delivery orders. The end of the county order will also allow for larger gatherings. Wake County's order allowed only immediate family to get together, while the state order allows up to 10 people to gather in public. A new report from a group of top epidemiologists and public health experts in the state projects that a gradual reopening plan isn't likely to overwhelm North Carolina's hospitals. The third in a series of briefings by a collaborative group of scientists at Duke University, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and the triangle-based RTI International, the update highlights some significant good news, that the viral spread of COVID-19 appears to be slowing. The preliminary report cautions, however, that the number of both cases and deaths continue to rise. Meanwhile, an updated analysis from the New York Times flagged the Durham-Chapel Hill area as a new potential hotspot for COVID-19 deaths nationally. As of yesterday, the data shows COVID-19 deaths in the Durham-Chapel Hill metro area have seen the largest growth rate of any metro area in the country in the last two weeks. Deaths there have doubled about every two days. But the raw numbers started relatively small. The three counties that make up the metro area, Person, Orange, Durham, and Chatham, now count 37 deaths as of last night. Two weeks ago, that number stood at just three. The Raleigh metro area also made the Times list for potential death hotspots at number 12, while Fayetteville was number eight on the list for potential case hotspots. The State Board of Dental Examiners has issued guidance for North Carolina dentists providing services during the pandemic. In a statement, the board said, quote, Although individual dentists may use their professional judgment as to what procedures to perform and when to perform them, failure to follow heightened infection control, sterilization, and patient safety recommendations may be viewed as a failure to meet the standard of care necessary for offering treatment during the COVID-19 pandemic. Infection control protocols considered adequate prior to the pandemic in many instances may no longer be sufficient for dental health care personnel during the state of emergency, end quote. There's a concern about food supply across the state of North Carolina as the COVID-19 pandemic progresses. Nationally, there's a high demand for meat, but there's also been many reports of virus outbreaks in meatpacking facilities in North Carolina. President Trump has signed an executive order, which went into effect yesterday, that requires meat processing plants to stay open even if multiple workers become infected with the coronavirus. The goal of this new presidential order is to stop the national meat shortage, but it could have negative effects for those who go to work every day in those factories with little protection. A Smithfield Foods employee who spoke to WRL News said they were not in favor of this order and that they were not getting enough protection while working at these meat plants. Last week, drive through testing at Mount Air Farms, a meatpacking plant in Siler City, resulted in 74 positive cases. That's 21% of the 356 people tested at the plant on Thursday and Friday. The two-day testing targeting symptomatic employees and their families is the largest mass testing to date at food processing facilities in North Carolina. This has been your Coronavirus North Carolina News Brief for Wednesday, April 29, 2020. 
As always, if you like the news and information you get from this podcast, let us know. Give us a rating and review on whatever podcast app you use. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our new episodes. Thanks for listening.